Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover. I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital. Well last time we got hospitalisation up and running here in cardiology and then we completed an event at the very, very last moment. It was proper edge of the seat stuff, right down to the wire and I think maybe we must have been possibly what, a couple of seconds away from failure but we got there in the end. The patient got the treatment they needed, they felt better and we completed the event. It was really, really close though. But we got there as we often do in the Geek Cupboard and now we've got got ourselves almost $72,000, which is pretty good. We did get paid some money from completing that event, which is very helpful. However, our counters over here came down again, of course, because somebody passed away last time, which was very sad. So I think we were on, what, three out of 10 and three out of five for this one over here and this one here, but alas, somebody died. So yes, they came back down to zero. So I think what we're going to do today is big job number one is to get a bathroom over here, because as we can see, I think that's a patient just there. And I imagine and they're heading to that bathroom there, which is okay, you know, that's fine, it's an okay one to use, but one over here would be slightly easier for them to get to, because it's closer to the ward. So I think we get a bathroom in here, and then we get the lounge sorted, and this is our super big, exciting mega lounge. We can go to town with that one. And then I think as well over here somewhere, we do need to get a bit of a staff room in because there's nowhere really for the staff to go and have a break. Is there a staff room over here? There's one in that corner. There's one over there. So there's a kind of neurology staff room, but there isn't one over here for cardiology. So possibly we could kind of build that around here, look. We could give them another great big kind of huge room over here. And then possibly over here, do we put in another canteen? That might be quite handy. Hang on, where's the other canteen? Is it on that floor? Yes, yeah, on that floor there. So would it be worth putting another one in kind of around here? There's a bit of a gap there, so we could fit one in. Maybe not as grand as that one there, because that's quite big, but I think we could get another one in. That might be worth doing. But first things first, right, let's go and get a bathroom in, because yeah, that's quite important as well. And I know what I'm doing with these now. We're quite good at putting bathrooms in, because they're sort of more or less the same kind of thing. So let me just go and throw this together nice and quick, and then we'll come back and do more exciting things with a lounge and a staff room and all that kind of fun stuff. But right, bathroom first. Right, there we go. One bathroom, very quickly thrown together. We know the deal by now. Toilet, sinks, mirrors, hand dryers, plant bin, and then outside by the door, I've put the little kind of decal sticker things to show people that that is is the bathroom. So that's all done. So now we can go and do something a little bit more fun. Let's go over here to the lounge because we've got quite a lot of money to play with and we have a great big lounge to go and set up, which is quite fun. So job number one, I think, windows. We can have windows over here, which is very exciting. So how about we have, let's have one like that and one like that. And maybe in the middle, just to make it look exciting, could we have a couple of the big windows like that? I do like that. That looks quite exciting. That looks good. Okay, right, so we've got that in place. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of room in here to put many, many things. Um, possibly we could get a lot of visitor seats. Possibly, maybe you should put them across here. Look, so over there, look, they could come in the door, have a bit of a gap. We'll put a plant and a bin in the corner because yeah, that's what we do. And then maybe down here, we could have all of the different sort of drinks machines and coffee tables and all that kind of stuff. And then over here, we could have some of the seats. That'd be okay. And then maybe in that corner there, we could have a little kind of sofa area. So we could have a sofa, we'll try and make them red. I do wish the sofas had a slightly more vibrant color palette to them. Because I mean, yeah, okay, they are different colors. You've got, you know, grays and reds, but they're really kind of, they're really dark red look. It's not a very exciting color. I want it to be the color of the walls. I want an exciting sofa. So I think if we put, say, a sofa there, and then one there possibly. And then over here we could put a TV. We could put a TV on a stand of some description. That'd be quite fun. Um, I don't think we could put a TV on the coffee table. Oh yeah, yes we can. TVs or radios can be placed upon it. So if we say put that there and then pop a TV onto there, if you're in here waiting for a long time, you can come in and pop the telly on and see what's happening. That's quite exciting. And then we do need to make that look a little bit more interesting on either side. And you know what would do that? Lovely vegetation, that's what. So here we go. Let's get some plants in. So a plant like that, plant like that. We will put a plant right there and we'll get a bin as you go out the room or come in the room, because that makes sense. So there we go. So a little kind of TV viewing area. What can we put in that corner? Maybe actually another bin would not go miss in that corner as well. So there we go. So we've got a little kind of TV viewing area set up. That's quite nice. And then down here, yeah, let's get all the um, all the stuff we need. So yeah, a couple of vending machines. We'll get maybe two of these in possibly. 
So let's have let's have like a vending machine like that, and then we'll have ourselves um, yeah the coffee and also tea. But tea out of vending machines is terrible. Vending machine, one of those, and then we'll get a water dispenser because people might just want a lovely, refreshing drink of water. And then we'll do the thing where we can put that just there and then put the fruit juice on it or not. Oh no, can I go on the square table? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Like that, put the fruit juice on there so a lovely drink look. I mean, maybe we don't need to replicate that. Maybe we don't need to replicate that. I was gonna say we just do that again, but that's plenty. Maybe we could have some lovely other things like some bookcases. That might be quite fun. Put a few bookcases along there to make it look kind of nice. That's very lovely. And then maybe, maybe here, we could have another selection of fruit juices. So yeah, maybe that's apple and that's orange or something. I think maybe, yeah, getting another bin would not go amiss just there. So pop that in just in case, you know, you've, I don't know, spot your drink or you've got an extra cup or something, you could put it in the bin. And then I've got a little bit of a gap there. Not so bothered about that. Um, I mean, a radio? Do we want to put a radio in there? I don't know. They've got the TV. They've got the telly. That should be okay. And then we do need visitor chairs because this is kind of what people are coming in for. So hang on. How can we fit these in so they fit the best? So yeah, they're going to be up against that wall. So how about we put... I mean, yeah, can we put... How, how many can we fit in? So if we had one there and then two... Okay, so if we put that one in the corner... And then do we want to have like a little a little gap? Like that. Ah, right, hang on. That's going to be a bit awkward because they're going to be right up with the sofa. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put them a bit closer together. We'll put them a bit like that. Or do we put them going this way? So hang on, have a little bit of a gap there. So put it like that. Oh, that might be better. I, I kind of feel like that's a, probably a better option because we don't need loads. We don't need like 30 of these. I think that will do. I quite like that. And then we need some stuff around the place. It's a bit barren in places. We need some stuff around the walls or whatever. So hang on, what else can we put? In fact, do you know what? A first aid kit would be quite good just there. That would make sense. And then maybe over here, we could have a little information board and then maybe a notice board. That might be quite fun. So a notice board. Um, and then, I don't know, what can we put over here? Can we put something on the wall just there? Can we put something in there? Do you know what? If we are going to put... If we're going to put a new kind of a canteen cafeteria thing in, we could put one of those on. Although this is a bit weird because it says the daily menu, but actually it doesn't go in this room because these people can't go and eat. This is for, this is for, you know, sort of family and friends of patients. And the cafe, the cafeteria thing is for the staff. So let's not put that on the wall because that doesn't apply. Um, okay, what else can we put on the wall? How about a poster about blood donors because that might be relevant in this particular room and a uh no a generic an inform an informative poster there we go wonderful and i quite like that that's quite nice it's not sort of overly busy oh hang on is there a clock in there possibly pop a clock in here as well can we have a couple of them so one over there and maybe one just there i like that so you've got you know, the visit a bit over here and then the visitors can have a nice break and watch some telly. They can grab themselves a book if they just want to sit and read a book, possibly. Loads of refreshment options. That's wonderful. Okay, right, that's sorted. And we're on, oh crikey, $66,666. Okay, that's slightly, you know, her 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 Herald's a bad omen, but okay, it's fine. Right, so now, do we get ourselves in a staff room? Do we put in a little staff room over here, possibly? And then, yeah, I mean, do we want to connect it up to the to the elevator there? So people can come up in the elevator and take a break if they're down here. Because is there a staff room around there somewhere? There isn't. Oh, there's the cafeteria, but there's not an actual staff room. So we could put both in. So hang on. Let's go to here. And um, yeah, common room. So how about, in not, not in emergency, hang on a minute, go to cardiology. There we go. Right, get a common room set up. Yeah, I think if we bring it, sort of round the corner, like that. Um, oh, that's where we're going to put... Ah, right, we can't put the thing into there. We can't put the cafeteria there. We could possibly put the cafeteria kind of over here somewhere. That'd be okay, wouldn't it? That would make sense. Um, yeah, I'd be okay with that. I'd be fine with that. Or is there another place where this could go? So if there's a corridor coming that way, and we have a couple of operating lounges there for cardiology... 
Do we put the other thing over here? No, it's got to go kind of over here. Uh, the idea, I uh, think, for over here is to have lots of sort of um, labs and blood test rooms and all that kind of stuff. We just put, I don't know, five or six of those along here. Just lots and lots of labs in this area. But um, yeah, okay, so how are we going to do this then? Because this is a bit of a weird space to work with. Unless, unless we make that corridor and then just put some more things across here, some stretchers, have one door possibly to, for the staff to go in, and then we can just sort of make it a nice sort of block like that. Again, that's going to be massive, but we've got loads of space up here to play with, so that's sort of okay. And then, um, yeah, we'll just go, yep, yeah, that can be corridor, comes down there, and yep, yeah, we should go to here. So, let's grab, hang on a second, hang on. First thing, get rid of that wall, and get rid of that wall. There we go, and then grab some flooring, drip a drop of that, pop that in, wonderful. Right, and then go to walls. And we'll grab the wall of that one and turn it red. And then we'll have all four walls, please. Yeah, this is going to be big. This is going to be a great big staff room. It's going to be a huge big place. Right. And then we need to get the flooring. So go and drip a drop of the floor from over there. It doesn't matter what colour it is. We'll change it to that colour anyway, even though it's a kind of wooden floor. But that's fine. And then we need doors. What doors have we got? Have we got no entry? Yeah, so restricted area, which does make sense. So how about we have one there if you're coming up and you're coming out of the lift. So you have to go all the way around and we'll put one possibly. Let's put it right on the. In fact, we'll put it there. Look, pop that there and then. Oh, hang on a minute. That's a little bit untidy, isn't it? Hang on a second. Draw that on. Draw that on. That's better. Um, is that complete all the way around there? Yeah. Okay, and then we just get some more stretchers and put them along here because we can have, what, four more? And that might be useful. So, uh, uh, hang on a minute, nurses' room, they have those, don't they? So into here, get some stretchers, get that colour. Again, I want more colours on the stretchers, please. I want more vibrant colours. Is it too much to ask to have a hot pink stretcher going on? I don't think it is, game. Uh, right, so one, two, three, and we'll put a wheelchair in. And again, a white wheelchair. I don't quite know why well, we can't have a red wheelchair. Yeah, they, they, somebody did put this down in the comments. And they said, why is the range of sort of wheelchair colour so limited? It's a bit weird. Because I think they said, I am on a red wheelchair right now. It is a bit odd. I don't know why. When, yeah, we've got all these different colours for the rooms and the walls and everything. Why other things have sort of weirdly particular colours? So, I mean, why the stretchers are like that colour and the wheelchairs are that colour? And the stores are that colour, and the office chairs are that colour. Why are they all, why is there not just a standard palette of colours? I don't know. But whatever the case, there we go. Right, so that is now in. So we've got some more things over there, which is good. So now we can make this. And again, we're going to start with windows, because windows are good. We won't have the big, tall windows, I don't think, in here. I don't think we'll have those. We will just have windows like that. Although... Having one at the end there. Oh, botherations. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. What we'll do is... Oh, yeah, we can't... We can't... Hang on. What we'll do, we just do that. Look. There we go. That oh, that looks equally terrible. Oh, now it's a... T <laughs> there we go. There we go. It, it's lovely and light. Joe, you know what? We're just going to do that. There you go. It's lovely and light in there. Now, that looks... That looks okay. Joe, you know what? They can look out across the city or wherever we are and it will be lovely and that's nice. Okay, right. Joe, you know what though? If you ever need to do this, the, to you know, shut the light out... It's going to take forever. Imagine doing all the blinds and all those windows. But there we go. Right. Here we go. Common room. So we need to have places for them to eat and sit and get drinks and all that kind of stuff. But I think, yeah, we can make this quite big. I mean, it it is way too big. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is just huge. It is huge and vast. And I would say unnecessarily sized. But that's okay. Unless, hang on, hang on. Do we make the common room, say, half that size... And then possibly put the cafeteria bit over here. That might work. That might work. Because that is a bit too big for a common room. That's a massive common room, which is a little bit excessive. Possibly we should break that up a bit. Hang on a second. Hang on. That might be an idea. Right, okay. So common room B, say, you could be that big. That's okay. To the edge of the sort of elevator wall thing. That wouldn't be so bad. And then... We need to go to, hang on, where is it? It's there, admin, and then get ourselves a cafeteria. And then that could be quite big. 
Um, how big is the thing? So 13 by 12. And let's make it 13 by 13. Let's just have it like that, shall we? So there we go. So a nice big sort of cafeteria going on. Yeah, okay, happy with that. Um, what doors did we have on the cafeteria downstairs? Um, oh, yeah, they've got the fancy glass doors. I wouldn't mind those again. I wouldn't mind those ones again. Hang on a second. Can we change the doors around a bit, please? Um, oh, and the walls as well. We might need to also change the walls ever so slightly. Hang on a second. Hang on a minute like that. And draw a wall, because that's good. And then just poodle that round that way, because that's the actual side we want the wall on. Okay, so that's good. And then we want to uh, remove that wall just there, which is wonderful. Also, possibly we do want to get rid of, say, that window. Get rid of that window. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, closing the blinds is now way more manageable in there. Right. So that's that done. Let's sort out this room first before we then go and do the great big cafeteria because we might be there a while doing that. So this is a bit more reasonable now, isn't it? So I think again, on this side here, we have all of the sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, drinks making facilities and what have you and fridges and things. And then over here, we can have places for people to sit. So I think what we'll do is... How about we have a couple of those like that? So I do want to get some fridges as well. So the fridges can go in the corner. Hang on a minute. So oh, where's it going like that? So one, two, uh, let's put three fridges in because we're nice like that. And we shall give them the slightly fancier coffee machines that can also make tea. And then we want to get ourselves a water dispenser. We'll put one of those there because I like those. And we will put the vending machine in. And we'll put the other one in as well. We'll put the rubbishy, where is it? The one that dispenses hot drinks that nobody's really going to enjoy. That one there. Uh, we'll put that in like that. And then we've got a couple of spaces there. So we could put some fruit juice there. That'd be okay. I kind of feel like we need to put a bin around here somewhere. Hang on a second. Hang on. So do, uh, where's the bin? Go to here, go to there. Grab us a bin. Pop that in like that. Okay. That's good. Uh, plant tip, need one of those. It can be right there on the side of the door. And then, yeah, so we've got all the places they can get their own food from there. And they can get sort of, you know, stuff from here if they feel like a little snack or whatever. We've got hot drinks there. We've got water. Got juice. What can we put just there? We do have a little gap just there. We could, do you know what? We could put a radio on there. Let's pop a radio just there. And then people can spill fruit juice all over it and it can just you know, go wrong. But okay, for now, that will do. Um, we will go ahead and put a clock into on the other side of the other one, because that makes sense. So people can tell the time. And then we just need places for people to sit and eat. So we'll have some, hang on, rotate it around a bit like that. So we can have some dining tables. Let's have a little gap though. So like that and like that. So that can sit... Quite a lot of people. Can we put fancy chairs around these as well? So, um, yeah, like that look. So snap to that. Okay, so eight people can come in and eat. That's okay. And then, yeah, do we want a little bit where they can watch TV? What does the other one have? I don't want neurology to feel like they're you know, being left out or whatever. Oh, yeah, they've got the kind of hand washing bit. We do need some lockers, actually. Lockers is quite a good idea. And, yeah, we'll have the little kind of sink arrangement because that actually is quite good in case they do want to wash their hands before they eat their food or whatever. So how about then, maybe we could have some lockers along here. So where, are, hang on, we go back into there. Where are the lockers? Are they on the next page? Uh, or have I just complete? Oh, there, there they are. They're just there. Right, so grab a locker and a locker and a locker. And then we want to get, where's the little stainless steel thing? One of those. And we'll turn that round. We'll put that there and there. So we get two of those. Uh, right, can we grab a sink? Where's the sink? Kitchen sink. There we go. So pop that in and that in. And then we need to get a mirror. Because it's important to look good, as we've said. So right, grab ourselves a mirror. And then put that above there and that above there. We do have a bit of a gap in the middle. There's kind of nothing going on just here. Ah, hang on. Could we then over there have the meal counter food thing in with jigs we could have say something like that just back to back we could get another one like that there you go that's quite nice i like that so you can come in this way you can sit down and have a you know have a bite to eat or whatever and have a chat You've got drinks 
You've got to put a music going on if you want to put the radio on. You've got your kind of snacks over there. You've got your stuff you bought in from home there. Got hot stuff given by the hospital there that we mysteriously don't pay any money for. I don't quite know how the food gets topped up. I, I mean, I don't know how that works at all, but okay, we'll just go with it. And then over here, lockers to you know, store your stuff. And then we've got somewhere to wash your hands. I like that. That's good. And a plant as well, of course. Very important. I think, have we got one gap? between there and there yeah we have got a gap just there what can we put in that gap it seems a shame to sort of leave a bit of a space there what lovely fun item can we put in there have we got anything we can put in there's nothing really obvious that would go in there i don't think could we put in a coffee table and then on the coffee table we're going to put files down but we're going to pretend there's some sort of magazines they're like, you know, fun magazines you can read if you want to you know, go grab a magazine and have a read whilst you're on your break. You can do so. Pretend they're not files and x-rays or whatever. They're exciting magazines about, I don't know, fashion and stuff. Right. That's that sorted. That's looking pretty good. However, we do only have 50,401 money. So I think what we do is, rather than burn through all that money, let's see how we get on now. So things are you know, sort of looking okay in terms of money. The only thing is, in not too long at all, we are going to have to pay the um, the wages on the day shift, and that's going to be quite expensive. Joseph Adams. Oh, these people I'm not so bothered about anymore. I mean, it's lovely that you're okay. Yay for you lot. But um, yeah, we've done that kind of event now, and it's all fine. So there we go. I think as well, what we could do is, when we get to tomorrow, when the day shift actually clocks on again, uh, we'll complete either an epidemic event or an accident event. The only thing is, if we do an accident event, we then need to immediately do another one so we can complete two in a row. We don't want to do one accident event and then leave it and the game goes, ha-ha, here's an epidemic event because then that'll break that chain. So we need to get that done. So I think, yeah, we'll try and do that at some point. But let's just let time tick on and see how much money we can get in. Okay, coming up to pay time and $85,000 down to $23,000. Okay, we've still got some money left. That's quite nice. Right, okay, three rooms with critical workload. I kind of feel like I should possibly be aware of that, and I'm not quite sure how we determine which one it is. Because, um, yeah, it says critical over in the admin department. <laughs> Some critical administration happening. Um, okay, so admin had a critical, a room that was critical. Where else did? And two in radiology. They were not the two departments I would have picked to have critical, you know, critically busy rooms. I would have said, yeah, it would be you know, sort of one of the labs or whatever, but but no, radiology. Okay, can we work out what rooms they were, though? Can we figure that out? Does it tell us? I'm not entirely sure how we're supposed to work out which ones it is. Um, yes, yeah, so in the day, too critical. And also in, in, yeah, in the admin department. I mean, what admin rooms critically busy? <laughs> I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Is it the uh, cafeteria? Maybe the second cafeteria will help out quite a bit. Do you know what? I genuinely don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but okay. I mean, the money is coming in quite well. The money is coming in very quickly indeed. I think maybe helped by the fact that we do have 20% more injured patients arriving because of, was it some sort of, I don't know, New Year celebrations or holiday celebrations or something, but people were partying too hard, I think it was, and they've ended up coming here. Um, David Thomas, what's wrong with you? Heart failure. Okay, right. Possibly, possibly we should try to keep him alive with all sorts of things like defibrillation. Hang on. Can we get rid of that and that and that? Put defibrillation top, please. That's kind of more important than his eye drops. <laughs> I think maybe do that first. Um, yeah, they'll sort that all out for you. It's okay. I'm sure they'll ICU hospitalize you at some point when they've stabilized you. Do you want to go and check where you are? You are over in that bed over there. Are they taking you away? Yeah, okay. You're going down to intensive care. That makes perfect sense. And yeah, can we give him all those things? Somebody else is collapsing. Uh, oh, you've got MERS. Highly contagious. Uh, okay, and you're collapsing. Okay, right. Give you that, th that thing there. Uh, give you all those other things as well to help with all that stuff. You've still got one hidden symptom. Okay, do, do you know what? Do all of those. Everything. Do everything to keep these people alive because we need those numbers to start ticking up again. One day we might possibly complete one of those, maybe in the dim and distant future. But, um, okay, hang on a minute. Mers man. Um, yeah, have complex antiviral therapy, please. Give him all of these things and also make sure he doesn't die. 
Well, I suppose if he does die, it doesn't matter right now because it doesn't bring the thing down. But we don't want him to die because it's Christopher Jackson. We like him. Hi, Chris. Um, Sarah Garcia, she has... Oh, my goodness me. What is going on around here? Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. So, we would like you to be defibrillated back to life. Treat all of these things there. So, do all that, please. Give you differential diagnosis to try and figure out your final hidden symptom. I should possibly be sort of a code blueing all these people. But I think they do sort of prioritise them anyway if they're in a bad way. Um, Sarah Garcia can't find a bed in intensive care. How? Hang on. How busy is intensive care? Oh, dear. Um, there is a bed free there, but I assume somebody is using that bed and they're just out and about having a test done or something. Okay, we might need to break into the emergency funds and get another bed over here in the sort of intensive care overflow unit. Oh, these are, oh, these are horribly expensive. Okay, fine. We've got to do it. Right, here we go. Let's spend some serious cash. We shall grab that like that. We'll put that there. These are not cheap at all. This is going to cost quite a lot of cash. That is almost $11,000. We haven't got that much left. But there you go. At least that person can now have a bed. Hospitalised, collapsing. Okay, we could do with no more new people collapsing today, game. Because we haven't got anywhere for them to go, which is a bit of a problem. So we could do with, yeah, sorting out all the ill people in intensive care making them require you know, care that's less intensive and then getting them out of here so more people can come in. Um, there we go. That event is finished. That's all fine. Right. Okay. Let's move time on pretty quickly. Joseph Thomas. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a very big problem indeed because now we need another bed. Oh, dear. Um, emphysema. Okay, right, yes. So your uh, yeah, your lungs are sort of, uh, your lungs are damaged and you can't breathe properly. Okay, that's kind of understandable that you're in a bad way. Have that thing, have that, have all of those things. And, okay, is it going to say there is no bed? We'll, we'll just keep an eye on you because it'll pop up again and say there's no bed. And then we might need to build another bed. There we go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right, okay, let's, uh, let's plunder the emergency funds even more and completely bankrupt ourselves and also that is the final bed that we can fit in and now i've got three thousand six hundred dollars and of course we have to pay in what seven hours or so the night shift wages which are about 40 grand so in the morning when the night shift leave we're going to be really really poor um hang on well, we just built a bed for that person hang on hang on hang on where are you are you in a bed hospitalized and treated whereabouts are you oh you're having some sort of other thing done to you okay right that makes perfect sense um i don't quite know what it is where's that what department are you in uh you're in i don't know what department that is uh i don't know where you are hang on which department's that I've, I've kind of lost track of what department is what i think is that is that internal medicine is that internal medicine over there? That might be the internal medicine department. I've kind of lost track of which one is which now. Um, hang on a second. Um, go there. Yeah, that's internal medicine. So you're in whatever that room is there. The special procedures unit. Oh, okay. That's good. Yay. Good for you. Right, okay. Um, treatment. Ah, okay. Cardiovascular surgery. Judy Hall cannot have any cardiovascular surgery because we don't have a surgery team available at night. Hang on, pause time for a second. So up in cardio, we do not have a team ready to do nighttime surgery because we don't have that many people here at night. And of course, that's expensive. That's quite a lot on the wage bill. However, that person does need some surgery kind of immediately. Can we get this sorted? I imagine there's plenty of operating lounges available yeah that one looks like it's empty it needs a bit of a clean but it's okay so can we go to cardiology and then just see what we need because i do find this a bit confusing so yeah the staff in the day is thus like that you need that but the staff at night is different because i think the game goes well you don't need to do operations at night but as we've just seen people need to be operated on at night time because, you know, they've selflessly, uh, selfishly, sorry, gone and had themselves a heart attack in the night and inconvenienced us. So, yeah, they do need to actually have operations at night time as well. The only thing is, what do we need? 
I find it very confusing. So I think we need, I think we need at least one surgeon and at least, somebody put this in the comments actually. Somebody in the comments did say, this is what you need to have yourself like an operating team. Let me go and check what they put because I think possibly we're lacking, we're definitely lacking surgery nurses. We're lacking those very clearly because we've got none of those on the night shift. I think we might need two of them on the, you know, to have an operating kind of crew. But I think, yeah, we've got ourselves a surgeon by the look of it. And we might have an anaesthetics person as well. So uh, I don't know. Do you know I'm going to go see what that person said in the comments because I think they did list what we need. Hang on a minute. Let me go and check the comments. Right, there we go. I found the comment I was looking for. And yes, indeed, it does tell us how to put together a surgery team, which is very handy indeed. So a big thank you goes out to Delta Dragoon who left that comment because it is very handy to see what we need in one simple, easy to understand list. It's very helpful. The game doesn't really help out that much, I don't think, in telling you what you need to have a surgery team available. It kind of goes, yep, there you go. That's what you need to make the department run in the day and that's what you need at night but as we just kind of talked about it does seem to assume that you don't want to do surgery at night time which is of course a bit silly because people get ill at night time funnily enough so yeah i think we do need to get this uh, this team together so here we go we need apparently one doctor with the surgery skill so let's have a little look we've got athena so yeah okay athena's got cardio surgery so athena can do the surgery then we need one doctor with the anesthetic skill Dr. Moon has got anaesthetics. Okay, that's good. And then one doctor with general skill just to look after the department while those two are doing other stuff. Okay, so we need to get another doctor just to manage things generally. And then we need two nurses with the surgical skill. So the surgery nurses. I know we've got zero of those. And then one nurse to transport the patient around. We've got two nurses, just you know, two regular ones on duty right now. Two of them, what are they? Patient care, clinical nurse specialists. Okay, so they're very good. They're good nurses, but they can't do the surgery. Okay, so we need to get three more new people on board to try and save the life, maybe, of Judy Hall, who really does need an operation. She needs, what was it? Cardiovascular surgery. So, okay, right, we're gonna try and sort that out. So three new people required. Let's begin with the doctor, because the doctor doesn't need any particular skills. And if we could find someone who is a surgeon, that gives us, you know, another person who could do surgery. But advanced diagnosis, if they're gonna be the doctor just, you know, helping out around the place, that could be quite helpful. There are three very good doctors there. They're very good. You've got John Davis. Advanced diagnosis 29%. But you are hiding some secrets from us. We can't we can't do this too much. We can't just keep refreshing this list too many times. Because um yeah, we haven't got that much money. Um Linda Barkley likes a bit of food. You're a gamer and you're fast, but again, you're hiding something from us, and you live quite far away. Um, you, I mean, you're quite good as well. Advanced diagnosis, 29%. You're equally as good as John Davis down here. Generally, though, you're not as good a doctor in your basic skills. Do you know what? We're going to reveal what John Davis's skills are. Please be three amazing traits. Please, no, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, dearie me. Right. Okay. That, uh, that didn't go entirely according to plan right there, did it? So Linda Barkley and John Davis are both depressed and we know that brings down the entire department and that's not how it works in real life but that's how it works in the game. Judy Wilson is a fast learner. She has a long commute so she can often be late for work. That's not so bad and she's yeah got practical diagnosis, 20% bonus experience to diagnosis skill after a successful diagnosis. We could get you on board I mean, okay, you might be late occasionally, but that's sort of fine. So how about we get Judy Wilson in and then we'll get the two nurses in. And then, of course, we know where we have to go after that. But we'll get the two nurses in first. So let's see then. So surgery nurses on the night shift. Do I press the night shift button? Uh, yeah, that one there. Right, okay, so surgery nurses on the night shift. Please be good. Please be good. Oh, no. Right, okay. Rachel Martinez doesn't have as high a medical surgery skill as anybody else, but she's no yeah, hiding no secrets. James Lewis uh, is hiding two things. Patricia Foster is hiding one thing. Judy Johnson is hiding nothing. Actually, Judy Johnson might be all right. You might be okay. Well, have you? Yes. Okay, you can come along. You can join and then go back to that. Okay. Oh, Mark Brown. 
Hang on, Mark Brown has very clean feet. He's got lovely, shiny, clean shoes, has Mark Brown. Very fancy pair of buffed brogues and um, rest resistance. So your rest levels decrease slower. You are hiding one thing from us. Okay, do you know what? I'm going to spend another of our thousand dollars that we don't have at all to spend. I'm going to spend it and see what the hidden things are. Okay, okay. So James Lewis is unpleasant and is a hedonist. Okay, not you, James Lewis. Rachel Martinez. I suppose we could, we could get Rachel Martinez. We could just employ her and just have her around on the night shift. And if she needs to go and do medical surgery, she can and she can improve. But I do like Patricia Foster. She seems quite good. Fast learner, scholar, and just fast. She's just quick. She's quick all around the board. It's Patricia Foster. So I think we get you. And you know what? Let's give a job to Rachel Martinez. Because you do seem quite good. You've got potential, Rachel Martinez. So there we go. Right, so I think, I think that means we should have enough people to then go and start this operation. I think we should be able to then do an operation if we can get the people together. Because we've got, yeah, our doctor over there to look after things. And then we've got more than enough nurses now. So we should be okay. So I wonder if that's going to work. However, however, we're going to find out if that works after, of course, we've seen who's going to join the hospital, which of course means we need to go over, say it with me, everybody, to the Wheel of Names. Right, there we go. The Wheel of Names has done its wonderful work again. So joining us over here as a doctor on the night shift, we've now got Katerina. And Katerina, I believe, is the name of somebody's cat. And I do like the fact that we have got other names in here now. It started out with people's real names or nicknames or maybe sort of internet names or whatever. But now it's kind of moved on a bit. We've got so many names in the hospital. We've now got cat names and dog names and fish names and D, D character names it's all very exciting so katarina is our doctor over there which is lovely so welcome aboard and then in terms of our nurses we've got on the night shift Kitey McKiteface, which is a wonderful name, which is referring to the little chat that people had over in the neurology break room that time when they all started talking about kites and we sort of accidentally stumbled across the first meeting of kite club in our hospital. So there's Kitey McKiteface who will no doubt be over joining Kite Club. I have to take a bit of a detour over to neurology, but there we go. So Kitey McKiteface is over here, which is quite fun. Um, and then we've got Madame Bonenfeld. And I might possibly have mispronounced that. And also maybe I've not spelled it quite right, but I think that's what was written down. So yeah, Madame Bonenfeld, Bonenfield. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but there you go. So Madame B is in. And then also we've got ourselves John Elder. And a few people do say preparing for surgery which is quite encouraging. So hang on a second. If we go to here and then go to there, are you actually going to surgery? Is that what's going to happen? So if we press play, it says no treatment available. And give you those things anyway. Give those things to treat your other symptoms. Yeah, whereabouts are you? So you're over there. Look, you're in one of the beds, which is okay. I think that's high dependency, isn't it? Uh, no, that's the regular ward. High dependency has got the things on the wall, the machines on the wall that go bing and bong and boop and keep people alive. But if they're getting ready for surgery, that does imply that they're going to go and, you know, do some surgery because that's kind of what they're doing. So where are they going, though? Where are they heading? Are they going down a level to do surgery on a different floor, possibly? OK, we're going to keep an eye on you because we have just assembled a surgery team for you. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Is that you in the wheelchair? No. OK, no, that, that's still you just that. OK. Um, oh, botheration. <laughs> We just sorted out a nighttime surgery team for you, Judy Hall. We, we just hired a load of people. Ah, oh, bother. Okay, right, never mind. Okay, she's going to go. At least it frees up a bed. Although those beds, there's loads in there. But never mind. Right, can we get through to the morning now then, game? Can we get through to the morning? A tiny bit of money just trickled in, but we're going to have nowhere near enough to pay the wages of the night shift. Here we go. Watch our money plummet. Minus $40,000. Just shy. Brilliant. Okay, so now we need to get through to 8 o'clock so the people who stayed overnight can actually pay up a bit. And then we might be able to get a little bit more money back in. It'll go to, you know, it'll go out the red, but I don't know how much money we are going to get. So here we go. Let's see. If we can come out of that with around 10 grand, that'd be amazing. So here we go. 11, 16, 20. Up to 22. That's not too bad at all. Okay, we're happy with that. That's good. Um, okay, have no one treated patients for 10 days. Of course, we didn't treat that lady there. So that's down to zero. Have no dead patients or lost cases for five days. One out of five. And now we're at the point where the day shifter in. Possibly 
we get an epidemic event done. Hang on a minute. Let's pop back down to here. How are we looking over in infectious diseases in terms of our quarantine rooms? Are any of them occupied? One of them. So somebody over there with a delightful spot of Zika fever. But I think the others are all empty. Hang on. Let's go and properly check. Um, yes, we've got five quarantine rooms if we need them. I think maybe it might be worth kickstarting an epidemic event. What do we get, actually? Hang on a second. Hang on. Insurance companies. Insurance companies. Show me what you've got. Um, so if we complete that one, for you, we get a prestige bonus of 20% for one day. Yay! <laughs> I can barely contain my joy at this amazing reward. What about a huge pile of money? Um, and that one is a prestige bonus of 15% for one day. Oh, this that's a little bit rubbish, isn't it? Okay, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do an epidemic event. We're going to get that done and we're going to see what happens. And um, yeah, we're going to we're going to put a hold on the um, the new cafeteria for now. Oh, hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on. <gasps> Kite Club. Kite Club's back. Look, it's over here now. Hang on. Is Kitey McKiteface here? If Kitey McKiteface is here. Oh, no, they will have gone home because they're on the night shift, possibly. Were they on the night shift? Oh, no. Oh, no. Kitey McKiteface has missed the you know, today's meeting of Kite Club. But um, yeah, everyone over here is having a nice chat about kites. Oh, look at everyone's just absolutely... They're loving talking about kites. Big kites, small kites, blue ones, square ones, round ones. Oh, look at this. <laughs> so much talk about kites. Why? I, I don't know. It's Kite Club. That's what it is. It's Kite Club. It's the craze that's sweeping the hospital. Everyone loves a kite now. So, um, yeah. Can we open up a kite shop? That might make a bit of money. Hang on. Are you going to join it <laughs> immediately talking about kites? Yeah, that's all everyone's talking about. <laughs> that's so silly. Kites, 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 kites. Right. Okay. Oh, you've got to leave. Sorry. You, you, you will you catch up later. Get the Kite Club newsletter and it'll be fine. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. This is, this is all good. I'm glad everyone's kind of you know, having a nice chat over there in the lovely new break room. Who tops up the food? I do not know, but okay, right. So, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Rice having a bit of a collapse. Okay, so do we now trigger an epidemic event or do we do those two? Hang on, how far along the chain are we as well? So, seven objectives complete for quick snap care, six for protect care. So, it doesn't really make that much difference. Um, okay, do you know what? We're going to do, we need to do two events. Whatever the case, either two epidemic events to complete that, two accident events to complete that one. They've got, hang on, they've got 12 objectives to complete their chain. They've only got 11. So it's more likely that we're closer to the end of their objectives, which means we get the exciting big payouts at the end. So let's do an epidemic event to move us closer to that, if we succeed, of course. So here we go. I don't really like triggering these ourselves because it seems a little bit self-destructive. But you know what? I think we have to get it done. So, uh, yep, go on then. Let's trigger an epidemic event and it can all go horribly, horribly wrong. An outbreak of a highly dangerous disease has been reported in a favourite tourist destination. All returning citizens who are not feeling well should report to the nearest hospital immediately. Take over all the patients. Oh, this one having a lie down there. Look, that's nice. Right. Who is actually uh, coming along? What have we got? Eight people. That's not too bad. We've had worse on the event. So hang on a minute. Let's go and code blue, everybody. Okay, they're all code blue. Let's move time on nice and quick and see what's going on. Right, so what exactly are we looking at? Because sometimes it says, oh, a very terrible disease has broken out. And they come in and they've got, you know, earwax or, I don't know, stub their toe or something. David Adams, favourite patient. Oh, he's, he's only just entered the hospital and already he's collapsing. Oh, crikey. Oh, good. Possible diagnosis, 1 out of 56. Okay, right. He's dehydrated. Maybe just give him a lovely cup of tea. That'd be amazing. Um, whilst we're here, can we please try and do some of these things? At least do a physical examination with him, because that would make sense. So, um, yeah. Okay, right. Brilliant. So, one of our people has already collapsed, although he just needs a drink. Um, Frank, <laughs> Frank Harris is collapsing from oh many 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 things okay but hang on a minute can we uh can we rehydrate that person and then give them all those other things a uh, physical exam would be quite handy and then if it is a virusy thing elisa sampling that is what 
people have said in the comments. I said, yep, yeah, do that thing if they've got if they've got you know, diseases. Do that Elisa thing. So we'll do that for now. If we can keep everybody alive, that would be amazing. Okay. Right, Elizabeth Rodriguez. Okay, this is good because you're not collapsing. Uh, you've got... Oh, dear. Yeah, you have got a, an unpleasant disease. However, nothing is going to kill you. You haven't got flashy on and off hidden symptoms. They're not wibbly, which is good. Right, so we'll do that. We'll do the CRP thing and, of course, do differential diagnosis because that will save the day. Right. OK, so we've seen a few people. Frank. Um, OK, you do have a wibbly hidden symptom. So we'll do these things. We'll do the ELISA sampling, do differential diagnosis, and we shall give you all of those things. OK, that's good. Who's coming up next? Can we please keep them all alive? Joseph Harris. Uh, OK. Again, one of those things. You do have a wibbly hidden symptom, so physical exam would be wonderful. Elisa thingamabob. And can we do differential diagnosis? Yes, we can. And then just have all of those. Okay, so we should be treating their current symptoms. So that's going to help out a bit. Rachel Clark has got the flu. Is it flu A or flu B? I'm not quite sure. Um, okay, physical exam might help with that. And then differential diagnosis. And then just, yeah, just give you those things to make you feel a bit better. That's quite handy. Mark Brown. Oh, dear me. We don't know much about you, Mark Brown. You've got one of nine pages of potential things wrong with you. Okay, physical exam. That would be quite handy. And then maybe listen to their chest. If it's sort of lung related, that might be a good idea. And then can we do... Can we do uh, do an evaluation? Because that just sort of sums things up. I think, yeah, do the ELISA sampling thing. And then have that and that for your current woes. Okay. It's looking okay so far. Elizabeth Rodriguez. Um, okay. So have steroid cream. That's fine. And you've not got any symptoms that are going to kill you, which is quite good. So do you know what? Do all of those things. And I think... If we do all those, we might be able to work out exactly what's wrong with you. Uh, right, Rachel Clark has influenza A. You've you've got the A grade flu. Um, okay, a couple of hidden symptoms. We could try and find out what they are, but we don't need to. We don't have to do that because they're not wibbly, so it's not going to cause her any kind of you know, lasting damage or whatever. In fact, Rachel Clark has already got a tick, which is good, and we can send her home. Perfect. Okay, already down, which is wonderful. This person has Ebola or Marburg. Okay, I kind of feel like we should possibly move you. <laughs> and um, yes, can we can we put you into isolation? That that would be good. Can we isolate? Yeah, you're already going into isolation. That's quite handy. Right, interview. And what's going to help? What's going to help with these? So physical exam is going to help. Physical exam. Speech listening. And abdominal palpation. Okay, so abdominal palpation. Speech listening. Do both and differential diagnosis. Of course, because that's the thing you do. David Adams, same sort of thing. Can you go up into there? Go into isolation. Have all those things because that will help you a bit. Interview, abdominal thing, speech, listening. Okay, so same sort of cases. Very helpful. Okay, now how are we going to muddle through? We haven't got that long. We haven't got that long. Sometimes you get a very long time. We're down to less than nine hours now. Um, Nancy King. You're not one of the people on this list. I'm sure they'll help you out, Nancy. They're very good. They're very good at dealing with collapsing people. There's a lot of them around here. Um, okay, whittle it down to four for Mary Barclay. So let's do... Hang on, hang on. What's going to help? Let's have a look properly. Oral cavity inspection. Physical exam. I mean, haven't we, we haven't done that yet. We've not done the basics. Physical exam. Temperature measurement. Just do basic and then listen to their chest. Right, there we go. Let's see if that's going to reveal anything. Um, Frank, we still don't know. Okay, how about... We're still waiting for the Elisa testing thing. Speech listening and a blood draw. That might help identify Frank's current problems. Uh, yeah, we're only on 12%. We've, we've cured one patient. Frank has got Ebola. Okay, we know now what to do. We give the experimental serum. There you go. In no way is that going to go wrong. They either kill you or turn you into a superhero. It's going to be fine, Frank. Right, so Frank, I think, is going to be good. Mary, okay, whittling it down. I think, is that going to be an x-ray type thing? Neck palpation might help a little bit. Thorax. 
Okay, neck palpation and thorax seem like two good things to do for now and that. And then if we still can't work it out, we'll have to do one of the big things. But okay, right. Hopefully we can work it out from what we've just told them to do. Uh, okay, Frank Garcia. Oh, still not quite. Oh, hang on. Hang on. You, you're not. Hang on. You've got potentially something quite horrible. Yeah, well, we want to, you to go into uh, isolation, please. Because <laughs> that's bad. Mary's got bronchitis. Okay, good. We figured out what it was without having to send you for x-rays and stuff. That's quite good. Right. You do all of those things and you are going to be fine, Mary. You're going to be fine. Oh, and Frank's good as well. Still not quite sure what's wrong with you. Hidden, flashy, wibbly symptoms. That's generally bad. Um, okay, do those two for now. And we'll see if we can figure out what's happening. Right, Frank should be okay. Frank, I think, should be okay. No wibbly symptoms going on. Um, yeah, you're going to be okay, Frank. I think we just leave you for a while. And then you'll just sort of, yeah, you'll just recover in time. You've just got an infectious disease. Joseph Harris... Uh, where are you up there? Okay, right, we still don't know what's wrong with you. What's going to help? What is going to help over here? What's that one? Right, temperature measurement does seem like quite a good thing to do. So let's do that nice and simple and do speech listening as well. And, you know, that can eliminate if they're confused or whatever. That could be quite helpful. Right, you can go home because you are treated. Hooray! Right, okay, down to six then. Joseph Harris... Still don't know which one you've got. Oh, dearie me. Uh, Marv, hang on a minute. Hang on. You should also be up there, please. <laughs> Let's do all the things. Or do all of those and give you some tranquilizers for the confusion. Okay. Right. Three people out of eight cured, but some of them are proving to be quite difficult indeed. Some are quite tricky. Four people are up in infectious diseases. No great surprise because it is an epidemic event. But um, yeah, we're struggling. We're really struggling with this. You've got an abnormal LFT. Oh, okay. African tick bite fever. So you can go up to infectious diseases. You can go into regular hospitalization and we'll tell you all about these things. And that should hopefully sort out your problems. Okay, so that'll be, that'll be done soon. So that's halfway there. That's 50% done. We've got five hours left. Okay, you've got Ebola. Um hidden symptom that'll do i think your treatments just need to kick in frank and you'll be fine okay hang on a minute mark brown lassa fever oh lovely right okay antivirals oh hang on a minute hang on you need to go up into here is it the bad one no okay so regular hospitalization up in infectious diseases they can give you that they can give you that and you have got wibbly hidden symptoms which is a bit worrying. So have all of those things done as well, please. Just to make sure that you don't die, because that would be bad. You, uh, waiting for you to plan the treatment or send them home. I'd like to send them home, but I can't do that because I haven't got the green button. Maybe we have to wait for those things to decrease a bit, possibly. But okay, we'll wait and see. Keep an eye on you. Oh, hang on. They've discovered another thing. Uh, hang on. Yeah, you need chloroamphrenicol. Okay, but that's good because you are being treated right now. Right, Frank, you've got Ebola. Okay, have some experimental superhero serum. There you go. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, David Adams, still not quite sure what's wrong with you. Temperature measurement, differential diagnosis. Have that thing to stop your fevers. Come on, come on. Five hours and counting. We're 50% of the way there. It's um slow going. But we're working through it. I mean, some people aren't even here. Dave, oh, David Adams has collapsed. <laughs> no, David Adams, say it isn't so. Exhaustion. Okay, they need an IV infusion. I think that's already provided. Do you know what? Do all those things for him. Just to try and work out what's wrong with him. I think he's going to be the problem patient, isn't he? He's going to be really tricky to sort out. Um, Frank. We have nothing else that we can do for you, I'm afraid. He's going to have to wait around for a bit, I think. Yeah, but okay, that's fine. Hopefully you'll heal up as well. Oh, no, you are. You're green. You're a green tick. John Wilson. Uh, John Wilson is not one of the people that we're sort of overly bothered about, but we'll help you out a little bit. Um, yeah, do do some of the things. There you go, John Wilson. They'll be, they'll be with you in a second. They're good at that. Uh, yeah, so now we're down to three. Elizabeth Rodriguez... I think, are you, are you done? Yes, okay, you're done. So eventually at some point you'll just, you'll just you'll go home or whatever. It's all fine. 
So we've got Mark Brown, David Adams, Joseph Harris. Two of them with no diagnosis, and we've got three hours left. Oh no. <laughs> we can't afford to fail an event because we can't afford the money and then the prestige hit. Right, we're down to two. We're down to two people. Joseph Harris and David Adams. And we've got no idea. Right, Joseph Harris. Joseph Harris has Ebola. Give him the magic superhero serum and everything shall be amazing. Margaret Wilson. Oh, you're in a bad way. You're in a bad, bad way. You need to go for a craniotomy. They'll sort it out. Please don't die, Margaret Wilson. Right. It's down to David Adams. You've got Ebola. Okay. Can we give him the experimental serum? Uh, oh, no. Hang on. Yeah, he has to go to... Hang on. Put him into there. Yes. Give him experimental serum. And please give it to him really soon. <laughs> right. Eight o'clock. So day shift ends. Um, down to 33 grand. Not too bad. Barbara Brown is collapsing. Um, she's got the sad kind of you know, farty cloud. Uh, okay. How about IV infusion? Those things there. And they'll sort that out in a second. Come on. All eyes on David Adams, to be honest. Right. You're you're fine. So we'll just put you not on computer control. You don't need to be on computer control. The only one really is David Adams. So, yeah, you can just go back to computer control. You can go to computer control. I think that's David Adams. Okay. And then you there. Mark Brown, computer control. We only need to look after this one person. Okay, so Joseph Harris is good. Okay, so where is David Adams right now? Can we see where he is? Um, he's being transported over. He's in the the high sort of you know, the quarantine room thing. Margaret Wilson is collapsing. Margaret Wilson is not in a good way. Margaret Wilson needs life support. Margaret Wilson needs much in the way of help. But if we could just give this person give david adams well, oh thank goodness i was gonna say give him the magic superhero serum right nine events completed in a row another 20 grand that's really helpful that means we can pay the wages now which is very handy and i think we don't do another epidemic event for now oh david adams it, well that you're gonna get better david it's fine we don't do another one for now because at the moment i think quite a lot of the um quarantine beds are full so we can't do another epidemic event right now i think Let's run it through until morning. Let's get through to the morning, get through to 8 o'clock, see what money we've got when it all comes pouring back in from the overnight stays. Okay, coming up to 7 o'clock, and it's been quite quiet overnight. We had one person collapse, and that was kind of it. So that's not too bad at all. Right, so one room at night with critical workload. Which one is that? Again, a radiology room. Maybe, possibly, it's the... We've only got... We've got plenty of... Hang on, hang on. What have we got? We've got plenty of X-ray rooms on the for radiology, haven't we? Where's where's the radiology rooms? I can't oh, hang on. No, that's too high up, isn't it? Hang on, radiology is over here somewhere. Yes, yeah, so we've got two X-ray rooms and then the one downstairs. So I don't think it's the X-rays. Maybe it's the MRI and the CT scans. Maybe they're a little bit too busy because there's only one of each. So yeah, possibly we do need to think about getting another one of those in each. They can't go on this floor, of course, because there is no room. Although, saying that, could they go down there? I don't think they could. I don't think they could fit in that gap. It's not quite big enough, I don't think, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. Never mind. Never mind. Right, so we've paid out the money for the for the night shift wages. And we didn't go into negative money, which is quite the achievement. So 7,000 monies. And now we just run time on until 8 o'clock. Look at that. Look at the amount of people. We've got 280 staff members. Every single one of them, bar two, I think. Bar, um, yeah, sort of a penge cupboard and Dr. Wee Hours. Uh, bar those two named by the Wheel of Names. That's a lot of people. Um, Linda Robinson is getting a little bit bored of waiting for some stuff. Okay, do you know what? We'll just queue up some more stuff for you. And then hope that they just get to it really quickly. But yeah, we do need some more labs. And yeah, 8 o'clock, 72 grand. Oh my goodness me. 72 grand. Then we pay out 60 grand in day shift wage. So we've already covered the wages of the day shift. So now we're just you know, racking up profit. But of course, we have to cover the wages of the night shift as well. Because that's how it works. But um, yeah, okay. So the money is coming in very well. I realise that we kind of got past day 100 without any kind of fanfare whatsoever. That's quite a big thing, getting past day 100. Did we do that today? 
Or was that last time? I don't really notice. I just kind of look at the time, really. Don't look at the actual day number. Well, there we go. We got to day 100, everybody. No fanfare. I'll make me own fanfare. Da, 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 da. There we go. That was good. Um, right, okay. So we've got to day 100 in the hospital. Things seem to be going quite well, he says, suddenly expecting terrible things to happen. Um, how are we looking back over here, then? So, hang on, hang on. Pause time. Pause time again. Let's have a quick look over here. It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six quarantine rooms now available. Do we, do we just trigger another one of these? We just go, yep, another epidemic event. There we go. Finish things off. Get that thing done for quick snap care. And at least that's done then. And then we can see what's next. Because the next objective might be something we've already done. It might be a thing that we've already completed. Or it might be something that's easy. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be finish 37 natural you know, sort of disaster events or whatever. It's going to be another eventy based thing, which I kind of like if it was just sort of a slightly more straightforward thing, like carry out so many operations or see this many patients or whatever. But yeah, I think it's going to be something complicated. Um, that one, I doubt we'll ever see that. I don't think we'll ever complete that one. Um, that one... We're on day two out of five. You know, we're slowly getting toward that one again. And that one we do need to do in its own video. I think at some point we have to wait until the morning and then you know, get the day shift in, trigger an accident event, wait till the next day shift, trigger another accident event. But hope that we don't get something else coming up in between because that would be annoying. And then we do have, of course, just here, as a few people have pointed out in the comments, Oopsie Corporation. And to unlock them, we can't put them in right now because we've not sort of unlocked their first thing. We have to create one doctor with the character editor. Now, I've kind of, yeah, I, I know about this. People are saying, why haven't you done that yet? I know it's there. I'm kind of leaving that for a bit. But we might well come to that very soon because really, if we look around the hospital, we've kind of completed a lot of what we need to complete. We've got fully functioning departments of every type. There's nothing we need to add, particularly. We do need to maybe put in some more operating lounges and such like, but yeah, we'll do that as the money comes in and as we get a bit more stable and we try and complete more events and we get more people coming in via the insurance companies and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get that sort of, the money will come in and we will add extra bits. And there's other rooms that are empty as well. Some of the examination rooms need populating and stuff. But again, we can sort that. One big thing we do need to do is the outdoors, of course, because the outdoors is incredibly, incredibly dull really boring so we'll try and get that sorted put some nice plants around the place and make it look pretty that's another big thing we need to do and then i think yeah we do need to come up here a couple of operating lounges over there i think and then yes we do need to get in a lot of labs over here probably just get another at least another what two of each type possibly maybe that'd be quite helpful hang on where are the labs so yeah go in and get another two probably hematology labs because they're the big, they're the ones that are quite popular. And then probably one, they've only got one each of those. Maybe another one of those and one of those. Maybe three hematology labs then. So three of those, one microbiology lab, one hexagons lab. And then you maybe get a cleaning closet up here as well, possibly. But I think that would be quite good. That would be quite good for the medical labs as well. Because that's going to help out a lot. Because I think that's where a lot of the holdup is. Waiting for blood work and lab results and all that kind of stuff. So I think what we'll do is... We'll wrap things up for now, so we'll finish things up, and then when we come back next time, we will kick off another epidemic event, and we'll just try and get it done, and that'll complete that goal for quick snap care, and then who knows where we go from there. I'm not quite sure what we do with that. Do we then just try and complete two accident events? Do we have a very sort of uh, event-heavy part next time with everything just sort of ticking over all the staff in place all the things in place maybe we do that we do need to get that sorted at some point put the cafeteria type thing in on this floor just help out a little bit but i think yeah maybe next time we make an effort to try and just move through some of these things over here just yeah get that one done possibly get that one done as well and then see where that takes us who knows we will hopefully find out when we come back next time hopefully you are still enjoying this if you are please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in project hospital but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i'll see you next time the city of cupboard it can be full of geeks very loyal geeks to me it's this sort of stripy hill 
That's interesting. Oh, a stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. Just really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire. 